Hi, I'm Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of today's newsletter is going to be how texting, phone calls, and contact should evolve during dating. So I got an email, this particular guy, he's obviously pretty frustrated and he admits he's a very needy person and he says he's not a good texter. So he was watching a video, this is one from years ago, and I, I don't remember the context of the video, it's just the art of texting video was the act. And then so he writes in to tell me that he respectfully disagrees because my instructions to that particular email was that your whole problem is you don't know the book. And it's not about reading the book, it's about reading the book and applying it so you can see that the wisdom that's in the book shows up in the real world and so in this particular guy's case he's very needy and what it drives needy behavior is deep down fear that he's not going to be loved and accepted by this particular girl and so therefore he calls too much he texts too much he hangs on her every word and a lot of ways you can tell he's acting like a robot and what it looks like is that he read the book 30 times and didn't really practice with anybody and then met this particular girl. And there's a lot of things that he writes in here that is clearly the opposite of what the book teaches. But there are some good things in here that he brings up that I can discuss about texting, phone calls, FaceTime, and then transitioning. Because for those of you that know from the book, what is the phone for? It's for setting dates and arranging a get-together, not to get to know somebody, not to try, and typically, especially if you're not a good texter, you should not be trying to crack jokes through text because it often is going to get misconstrued. And so what he's noticing is this girl now, after about three and a half weeks of dating, instead of her being head over heels in love with them like she should be, assuming she's a normal, healthy woman, if he'd have applied what's in the book properly because most women are going to be in love by week six seven and then be trying to lock you down and that hasn't happened and yet this guy claims he's read the book 30 times but yet he's basically through text trying to get her to commit to a relationship which is that is not what the book teaches and there's several other things that are in here that he's doing that i'll point out that are the opposite of what the book teaches and so the whole purpose is that you're trying to remain mysterious because guys like this, guys that are super needy, they call too much, they text too much, they pursue too much, they try too hard because deep down they don't believe that they're worthy. And all of us, all human beings act consistently with how we view their, ourselves to be and it doesn't matter whether the view is accurate or not, but that's how we will operate. And so if this guy is needy and he's insecure and deep down he doesn't feel worthy, he's going to try to make up for that by trying to force things instead of letting them happen. Because love is allowing. You're creating the conditions where, because what typically happens is men start the courtship, they start the ball rolling, they pursue in the beginning and you're just going to take measured steps, basically one date per week. And then when the woman starts reaching out after your date, she just use that as an opportunity to set the next date. And typically what happens is that as the weeks go by, she texts more, she calls more, she FaceTimes you more to the point where you're going to be typically hearing from her two, three times a day. And you're either going to be spending the night at her place or she's going to be spending the night at your place. That's typically what happens when you get into a relationship. But this guy is three and a half months down the road. They're still not exclusive and they're only seeing each other two to three times a week. And the fact that it looks like he's doing everything through text and no phone calls, she's not FaceTiming him. Typically what that shows me is that there's a lack of intimacy and there's a lack of closeness in their relationship. And plus I could tell he's being a little bit too anal and robotic and not, not enough not loose enough. And as the book says, you can text a girl, you can use a messaging app, but what's most masculine is calling on the phone. But yet he's relying on text for whatever reason. So just from that perspective alone, if he's only doing texting, that is less masculine than calling a woman up. Because <clears throat> typically, 
at this point, especially if you're used to dating younger women like yours truly, especially if you're dating women about half your age, girls typically will FaceTime you. You'll just get a FaceTime call out of the blue. You can answer it. You can talk. It's like, I want to see you. I want to see you tonight. What time are you coming over? It's just by this point in his courtship with this girl, she should be in love with him and they should be seeing each other just about every day. But that's not happening. And as a matter of fact, it's kind of going the opposite way where she's getting a little more colder and distant and that's kind of sending him in an emotional tailspin. And so I could tell the insinuation here is like the book is the problem, not his behavior, even though I'll point out that he's doing, in a lot of cases, he's doing the exact opposite of what the book teaches, yet he's like, oh, I read the book 30 times, coach, I know. It's like, bro, okay. I love that when somebody that's an amateur student wants to lecture me on what's in the book. So this should be fun. Hi, coach. I listened to the Art of Texting video. And I have to respectfully disagree with this quote from you. Your whole problem is that you don't know the book. Well, you're not a coach. You don't do this. You haven't been doing this for 20 years. And whatever I said in that video, I haven't gone, I haven't seen that video in years. I think it's a really old one. Maybe it's 10 years old. But if I tell a guy he needs to read the book, because that's when I do phone sessions with guys, that's always one of the biggest problems. I had a guy I talked to the other day. He's been following me for four or five years, and he's read the book twice. And he read the book once when he screwed up with a girl that he was dating a few years ago, and now she just came back into the picture, and he didn't, because I had a phone session with him a few years ago, and I laid out exactly what he needed to do, but he's very successful, very well off, he's a high income, high net worth earner, and he's used to bossing people around. And he admits, I didn't take you seriously. I wasn't a good student. I didn't read the book until he went out with this girl a second time. He got a second chance and basically did exactly the opposite. And so that's on him. And we had a good laugh about it in the phone session. He's just like, you know, it's like one of the things that Doc Love used to say was that a beautiful woman is like kryptonite to most most guys. They basically have the power to make a dude fall apart. And that's typically what happens when a guy's dating a girl he really likes. He just cannot handle it. He becomes overwhelmed with his emotions, tries to force things, and literally chases the girl away and displays a lot of unattractive behavior, which, you know, you'll see there's quite a bit of things this guy is doing wrong here and it's just completely sailing right over his head because he's all up in his ego that the problem is not him it's my book and my videos so he says i have personally listened to the book over 30 times and i still get flustered and nervous if my lady friend we were dating for three and a half months but never had the talk which shows that he's focused on the relationship and locking her down because quite frankly it should have happened by now and it's not and I'm assuming this is a normal, healthy woman because the book works on normal, healthy women, not mentally ill lunatics that just are out to make your life hell. So she texts too much between dates. Should I share with her about my day? Should I send pictures about my day? Are you a girl? It's like I, I almost never text and usually what I get when I'm not with my girl is FaceTime calls out of the blue. That's when you have real intimacy with somebody is they FaceTime you. When they keep you at a distance, they're typically going to text. He says, should I ignore her? No, the book doesn't teach to ignore her. Remember, the phone is for setting dates. You're creating the conditions where you're putting minimal effort in texting. Again, remember, the book says calling is way more masculine. But he chose to text because it's easier and less risk of rejection. But he's trying to crack jokes and act cute and you know use sexual innuendo. There's, there's an example in here of sexual innuendo that he does, and it goes over like a lead balloon. <clears throat> He says, should I just wait and text her back very minimal answers? Well, again, if it was me, I would be calling. I don't want to, you know, unless it's something short and simple, I'm going to text. But normally under normal circumstances, I'm just going to call. But if your girl is calling you two to three times a day, maybe once in the, I mean, this is assuming that she's back at her place or at work or whatever. Maybe at lunchtime you get a phone call when she's on break or something like that. 
that's totally normal, but it looks like he is, this whole relationship happens through text. And again, there's just not, it's, there's an obvious lack of intimacy and closeness between the two of these people. He says, it truly is not covered that much in the book. Well, again, as the book says, the phone is for setting dates and arranging the get-togethers. And if you started out doing that and only calling once a week and making one date, and then she starts reaching out and texting you a day or two after your date, hey, it's great to hear from you. I want to see you again. When are you available to get together? Something simple like that. Don't be a robot and, and text that exact phrase. It's be creative and put it in your own words. The point is, is you're going to arrange a get-together. Hey, you should come over tonight. But it's like it doesn't have – and the other thing is you don't have to go out on an official grand gesture type of date every time you go out, especially several weeks in. Maybe you go out on a regular date once or twice a week. And the other night she's coming over after work. You're making dinner together. Maybe you're talking, hanging out. Maybe you're Netflix and chilling. You're relaxing. Maybe you're taking a bubble bath together. Maybe you're grilling out. Maybe you're sitting in the jacuzzi having a, having some coffee or having some wine or whatever it happens to be. These are just the normal things that when two people become a couple, they're just always around each other. So he says, I try really hard to never double text. So that tells me he's double and probably triple texting. In other words, because he's impatient and waiting for her to reach back out. He says, I wait 10 to 15 minutes to respond to her text. Again, you don't have to be a robot. It's just you can mix and match. And especially after three and a half months, if you're available, you can text her back. It's not a big deal. And he says, sometimes I wait till the next day to respond. Well, if you've been dating a girl three and a half months and she texts you in the afternoon and then you're waiting till the next day to respond, again, that just il illustrates the fact that there is a total lack of intimacy and really, this girl is just somebody that's an occasional friends with benefits a couple times a week. That's all it, it's really amounting to because of the lack of intimacy. You shouldn't be waiting a day to respond to her. That is not what the book teaches. What it teaches is the initial – for because everything in the book is designed to create the conditions where the woman is pursuing you in every way, physically, with touching, spending time with you, calling you, texting you her pursuing you because if the woman is pursuing you and doing most of it and ideally if you're really following what's in the book most of the time you're going to be able to get away with her doing 95 and even 100 percent of the pursuing throughout most weeks and unless she occasionally complains about it that you're not reaching out enough or whatever then just reach out once or twice a week and surprise her in a different way because all she's really saying when you don't reach out enough is that she's saying you're not reaching out enough to the point where it almost makes me feel like you don't care. And so when she tells you that, instead of complaining and arguing with her, you just say, no problem. And then you reach out a little bit more because that shows you heard her, you understood her, and you started reaching out. You don't want to overreach out to the point where now it flips and you're doing 95% of the pursuing because if you do that, you're going to get friend zone and blown off. He says, we loyal readers still need help and advice when in early relationship. Well, you're not in a relationship on how to keep that spark going. And again, that just shows me the mindset is how do I get her attention and, and validation? How do I get her to like me? Instead of, is this woman a good woman to date? Is she a good woman for me? And let her win you over. So I can already tell his mindset is the opposite of what the book teaches. Regarding how much you text back, ignore her until the date. Again, if you're three and a half months in, you should not be thinking, I need to ignore her. The book doesn't ever teach anything about ignoring a woman. It just teaches taking measured steps and taking your time to respond by matching and mirroring her level of enthusiasm. So if you text her, say she texts you and then 15 minutes later you text her back and then two hours later she texts you back which is totally normal. Maybe she sets her phone down and doesn't look at it for an hour or two, or maybe she goes to the gym or whatever, or it's in the charger. These things are normal, and they should not make you come unglued and freak out. So it's just not a big deal. If you're three and a half months in and she takes two hours to respond, I mean, that, that's totally normal. Maybe she put her phone in the charger, or she had it down on her desk or, or whatever, or it was in her purse, or she's busy having lunch and not really looking at her phone. 
He says, I have been dating a girl for three and a half months. In the first two months, she was texting me way more. I have been hanging out, having fun, and hooking up with her two to three nights a week for the past three months. Again, three months in, you should be together almost every night, and you should be exclusive. But that didn't happen. And again, if this is the first girl after reading the book 30 times that you're practicing with, you can't expect that you're going to be perfect. But the bottom line is instead of her interest going up and you spending more time together, I don't, maybe you're putting her off and you don't want to see her too much because you're worried about that. But at the end of the day, if a girl is calling and texting you multiple times a day, you should be together just about every night at that point. But again, that didn't happen. But if, you know, just the ebb and flow because women are like cats, some say you just spent the whole weekend together and Monday she texts you and then three hours later she texts you back. Or you text her back right away and then an hour later she responds to you. Again, sometimes she sets the phone down. It doesn't mean that she's just playing games with you. You're going to match and mirror the level of enthusiasm and effort when it comes to text. If you text a girl to go out on a date, at say 4 p.m. in the afternoon and she waits till 11 a.m. to text you then it shows you're really not that important to her so you kind of match and mirror that level of enthusiasm by taking longer to text her back but again if you're three and a half months in you shouldn't be worried about these things so he says the last month and a half she's had days of texting me all day followed by one to two days of almost no correspondence that's kind of normal Especially if you're only seeing each other two to three times a week. Sometimes, you know, maybe she goes off and she's with her family and doing things. And you don't see each other for a couple of days. So it's totally normal. Women are like cats. That's a chapter in the book. And men are like dogs. Women are like cats. Men are like dogs. So you can't get upset. You can't get butthurt. You can't get perturbed. You can't think, oh, my God, it's the end of the world. She hasn't texted me for a day. What am I going to do with myself? Go see your mom. Hang out with your friends. Have a life outside of her. Stop obsessing over her. This past Tuesday morning, Halloween, I left her house and she said I can come back over Thursday night. Well, she texted me all day Tuesday, which gave me the usual bout of anxiety. I felt like saying, hey, the phone is for setting dates, lady. It's like there's nothing wrong with that. If she's texting you, you text her back. It's not a big deal. I responded with minimal answers yeah, if she sends you a meme, you can say, ha ha, you can like it. It's not a big deal. If she asks you a question, you can answer. It doesn't mean be a cold fish. Then finally at night, I sent her a photo of my dinner saying, we're out at BJ's. I assume that's a restaurant or maybe it's the BJ's wholesale place, kind of like a Costco, I think. And then she didn't respond again that night. Yeah, it's like, don't take it personally. It's not a big deal. Maybe she was busy. Maybe the text was boring. That's how a conversation thread closes. So it's like tennis. You don't need to text. You don't need to say anything. So, but notice he texted her and she didn't text back. And so what does he do the next day? He double texts. He's like, I try not to double text, but he does it all the time. Why? He's not texting her because he wants to talk to her. He's texting her because he's worried she's not going to like him. Because remember, this is a needy guy. The next morning, wanting to show how much I want her, women don't care how much you want them. They only care about how much they, they only care about how they feel about you. They only care about how much they like you. So that's not going to do anything to raise her attraction for you, dude. And again, that's in the book. I sent an overt, this is like really cringe. He sent, I sent an overtly sexual text about, so remember that she didn't respond to his previous message late that night and he wakes up the next day needy and worrying about his future with her and whether or not he's going to be in it or continue to be in it. So he feels like he's got to communicate how much he likes her because probably some chick told him that because that's what women always say. Oh, let her know how much you care. And then you do that and it goes over like a lead balloon like this, this train wreck of a text, this train wreck of an attempt it's sexual in you and you. And again, this is why, especially for this guy, this is why you should be calling on the phone or FaceTiming each other. But again, there's a total lack of intimacy in here between these two. So his text says, remember that Halloween chocolate bar you sent me a picture of last night? I'd like to melt that down, smother it from your stomach to your ass, then lick and drink it off you. 
He says, I figured she would love that and say, Mmm, that sounds good. Or, Mmm, that sounds good. <laughs> what do you guys think about his text so far? She re Instead, she responded, Yuck. Oh, let me do the girl's voice. Yuck, that sounds gross. I replied, Really? Okay, noted. She proceeded to say her, quote, body is not a dinner plate and that she'd have to clean it off the sheets and all that would be awkward gross and not fun <laughs> i called her an hour later because now he's backpedaling oh god oh no she's not gonna like me i gotta i gotta prove myself to her and so subtly again this is giving away his mindset when he's with her when he's texting her He's constantly communicating. He doesn't feel worthy to be with her. And that's a big part of his problem. I called her an hour later trying to explain myself and backpedaling because, you know, she probably went cold after that. And he's going, oh, i got to do something. That's called the illusion of action, which is also discussed in the book. And you were falling under the illusion of action. Again, I would have never sent this cringe text because, again, you're double texting. You already have a date set up. The phone is for setting dates. There's no reason to send all this garbage. It's totally unnecessary because you're thinking like a girl. So he says, saying that I'd seen that in a movie and was just trying to be romantic and playful. We talked about why I liked that. I said that chocolate on her body seemed to me like something romantic to try. Well, you should con do it in person and surprise her with it. Not send a cringe-worthy text like that. That's vomit-inducing. Like some people who put whipped cream on their partner to lick it off. <laughs> and she, this, this guy's constantly stepping in it. And she asked, did I like eating ice? Or did you like eating whipped cream off an X or something in the past? I said, I can't remember. And changed the subject. I felt uncomfortable sharing intimate details of past relationships. <laughs> uh, uh. Coach, I was backpedaling. She laughed at me for saying I forgot, and we got off the phone. I waited until that evening yesterday at 9.30 p.m. and texted, Hope your day was wonderful. No response. So, again, he's he's multiple, three, four times over texting. Again, keep in mind, he's got a date. He didn't have to do anything. All this shit was completely unnecessary. And so because he's backpedaling, and you could tell he's full of fear, and she can sense it. She can tell what's going on. And it's a turnoff because he's expressing the opposite of confidence. He's expressing insecurity. And the number one masculine strength characteristic that women love in men is confidence. And he's displaying the opposite of confidence. Like when she, you know, if you'd have texted that and she would have said, ew, that's gross. I said, all right, well, I'm going to get a five gallon bucket of melted chocolate and then just dump it all over you in your bed something just obnoxious and playful instead of oh backpedaling oh god i gotta do something now it's thursday and tonight is the night i was supposed to go to her house again i texted again this morning so he's over pursuing and it's not dawning on him again he's trying to say it's all the book's fault it's the video's fault it's like the book doesn't tell you to keep double triple quadruple texting somebody it's like, you know, he's stuck in the sand and he's just, whoosh, he's gunning it and the car is just getting, whoosh, getting more and more stuck. I texted again this morning proclaiming, I have enjoyed our time together. I hope she has too. I like her, etc." And basically stated, I basically stated my desire for the B, G, and E words, LOL, which stands for boyfriend, girlfriend, exclusive. He says, no response yet. So he's like quadruple texting and now he's like, hey, will you be in a relationship with me, please? It's like, come on, dude, this looks really bad. This is not what the book teaches. You're asking her to be in a relationship. Again, the woman is supposed to bring that up and that's right out of the book, bro. He says, I am in a tailspin of my own making because I am terrible at texting. Well, you're just a needy, insecure guy and you are stuck in the illusion of action and it's not that you're terrible at texting. Well, I mean, that text was really fucking terrible and atrocious. But you're ignoring the principles. Dating's like tennis. You hit one ball over the net and you got to wait for it to get hit back. And you didn't do that. Instead, you turn the automatic ball machine on full breach and just boom, 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 boom. 
And then, of course, she's like, ah, what's with this guy? And she went running off the court. I plan to just go over to her place tonight, as we had agreed upon before all this drama. And if she doesn't like it, say, hey, we both agreed to see each other again tonight. No, you're just like, hey, we had a date. What are you talking about? You told me to come over. I was like, are you upset? What do you mean? You were not excited about my chocolate ecstasy? You didn't like that? I'm going to have to think of something else that's may even more cringeworthy than that one, since you like that one so well. Go with the flow, diffuse with humor, and take the stick out of your ass, please. Love is playful and fun, dude. Don't take yourself so goddamn seriously. So, yeah, you had a date set up. Just go over there. But all this texting, none of this shit was necessary. It was all because you're projecting your insecurity and your needy feelings on her. And this girl's obviously, it's not her first trip around the block and so she's probably had plenty of guys behave this way and usually that's the kind of thing that makes them go Ugh. Ugh. that's why she hasn't texted you back because she's going what's with this guy what the hell he's totally falling apart the kryptonite is just making him go ah uh, i must text 10 times that you, you, your book told me to do it uh. i feel like i took my shot with that feelings text today it's because I wanted to see if we exclu are exclusive or what. Men are not going to know what they're doing are not going to be like, where do I stand? Do you like me, Mommy? Do I, can I get an attaboy today, please? This looks bad, dude. This is really pathetic on your part. Which has been bugging me recently. Well, again, this is right out of the book. That's feminine energy. You're acting like an insecure girl. This whole week that you've been texting her, you're acting like an insecure girl instead of a stoic, strong, mysterious, masculine man. You had a date set up with her. There was absolutely no reason for this whole series of train wreck texts and phone calls and backpedaling. So now it feels really like a texting disaster. Well, that's what happens when you do the opposite of what the book teaches. It is not because I have not read the book times enough times, though. Well, you're not applying what's in the book. You're doing the opposite of what it teaches. You were warned in the book to not do this because this is the exact result. This is as predictable as the sun coming up in the east and setting in the west. So I believe it was Ayn Rand who said... You can ignore reality, but you can't ignore the consequences of ignoring reality. And you ignored what the book taught, and you're experiencing the consequences. And quite frankly, the beginning of your email is trying to blame it on me. You can't blame me for your fuck-ups. As Don Shula said, the late, great Don Shula, the most winning NFL coach in NFL history, 347 victories, he said strong men blame themselves, weak men blame others. So stop being weak and stop acting like a bitch dude you're supposed to be the more masculine one here and instead you're acting like an insecure girl who doesn't feel like she deserves to be with this person it is because i don't have much relationship experience that's why you read the book and you apply it with women you're dating you don't read the book 30 times and then not apply it until you meet a girl you really like because again she's like kryptonite to you and you're just completely falling apart this feels all new to me. My past relationships were not healthy with either Hispanic drama queens or needy, clingy girls when I lived in China. We gotta take our jobs back from China. This girl is from a good family, loves her parents, goes to church, and we get along great, and she would be a great wife and mother. Well, you don't really know that. You have, you're not in a relationship with her. Maybe a year or two from now, you can make that determination, but not after three and a half months of dating and when you're basically begging her to be your girlfriend. I really want to be serious with her. You should be focused on creating the conditions where she would want to be serious with you. Instead, you are assuming the female role in the courtship and it's turning her off. Please tell me how I could have done better and what I can do now. Nothing. Just go over and hang out and have fun and hook up. And if she breaks your balls about what you said, Laugh at it. Just say, well, I'm going to have to come up with another cringeworthy text. Out of the blue, maybe next time it'll involve chocolate and strawberries, maybe some whipped cream, maybe some vanilla pudding, maybe some creme brulee. 
You never know. I might surprise you with a whole buffet of chocolates. Chocolates. Love is playful and fun. Take the stick out of your ass, dude. You, you can all you can laugh about this. You have a date set up. It's okay. It's not the end of the world. He says, I look forward to finally seeing and hearing her response, whether that be tonight or in the future after I back off. I just know I have now laid my cards on the table regarding the relationship I'd like, and I need to back the fuck up and let her respond and come to me. Yeah, that's what the book teaches, but yet you're doing the opposite and blaming me for it. Come on, man. If not, I have to move on and don't look back. Well, I have to move on and don't look back. No, you need to go over to her house, hang out, have fun, and hook up, and beat up her pelvis, and give her plenty of orgasms, and laugh about it. It's not a big deal. I know what you're going to say. I care too, care way too much. She can sense that, and I'm acting needy and desperate. Yes. I will keep trying to improve and keep listening to your book forever. Well, the important thing is you can read the book a thousand times. The knowledge and the wisdom and the skills come in applying it through trial and error. And the better you know the book... The better, and plus, if you had a couple other girls you had been dating, it would have been a lot easier to be way smoother with this girl. But since this is the only thing you got going on in your life, you've already decided you want her to be the mother of your children and your future wife, even though you kind of barely know her, which is kind of ridiculous. You don't have enough information and you haven't spent enough time with her to know this. You just don't. It's way too early in the process. So, if you got a question or a challenge and you'd like to get my help, go to understandingrelationships.com, click the products tab at the top of your screen, and book a coaching session with yours truly. Until next time, I will talk to you soon. Mm-hmm.